Welcome and welcome back everybody, Tia here, and in today's video we'll be checking out a small flip and fill train game from Game Right Games, and that is Metro X. During the playthrough I will give a tutorial about how the solo game is played, and be sure to stick around for the end of the video where I will share my thoughts about the solo game and multiplayer versions in general. If you've been around and you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe down below. You can also click the like button if you do end up enjoying this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Here is a solo game of Metro X set up and ready to play. During the course of this game, we will be flipping over cards from our station deck, which will have numbers and various other special cards that will allow us to fill out metros and complete different lines for each colored metro. For setup, we're going to grab one of the boards and markers. You can choose which side you want to use, either Metro City or Tube Town. We're gonna go with Metro City for this game. You can also go ahead and grab a reference card, which are double-sided. I grabbed two two just so we can see the different transit card actions as well as the penalty table which will help us with scoring empty stations at the end of the game and we also have our deck of 15 metro or station cards these will determine what we can fill in on our board from turn to turn so for our first turn we're going to go ahead and flip over the top metro x card and we can see that it is a three. So what we are going to do if it is a number card is we are going to write the number on one of the colored metros that has a space available. We are then going to cross off that many spaces on that particular metros line. Now there are some exceptions to that. If we have a previously crossed off space, let's say for example that we have this space crossed off from the green line and we have these three spaces crossed off from the orange line. If I wanted to cross off three spaces for the red line, I could only, I would go to my first open space on the red line, which is here. I would do one, two. Now, because the next space is already crossed off, I'm gonna forfeit any other points that I would get from this card. Similarly, if you get to the end of a line and have no available stations left, then you will only cross off as many as you have. So to start off with, we have a number three. I think we're going to go ahead and place it potentially down here on our gray line because those three spaces will line up nicely with a station that connects to our green and yellow line as well. All right, and if we ever complete an entire colored line, we are going to circle the diamond and we'll receive those bonus points at the end of the game. Flipping over our next card, we have a five, another number card. So we could start to work on our red and orange lines potentially. I think we're going to go ahead and do that by starting with our, let's do our red line. It'll be less points if we don't complete it. So we have one, two, three, four, five. That gives us a nice start on our orange line as well since those two are connected at the start. All right, now we have one of our special cards which is a skip three. This allows us to fill out the first three stations in any color um, and we can also skip over previously filled out stations. So in the example that I gave before where we could only use two, we would be able to use our third after the cross out one for this case. Um, right now that doesn't really apply for us. So instead, maybe we should start on our pink line over here. So I'm gonna put a three just like we would with a number card and fill out the first three spaces in our pink line. Okay, moving on. Ooh, we have another five. Let's start our green line down here. So we'll fill out a five and go like so, four and five. Okay, and our next card is a three. So we could probably get away with starting our Hmm, this is tricky. Let's do our red line. Um, the reason why is because we'll be able to go one, two, three. Now these last two stations for red, um, even though we can't add directly to our red line, these two stations can be filled out by completing the yellow and the purple or blue. So those will naturally finish later on, hopefully. <laughs> All right, and we have another three. Let's go ahead and continue with our yellow or start our yellow line. One, two, three. Okay, and our next card is a four. Let's see, one, two, three, four for our yellow would get us there. Then we could fill this one out later. So I think we're gonna continue gunning for yellow. Two, three, 
for. All right, and our next card is a free space. So for this special transit card, we are going to be able to fill out any one space and we do not have to write a number in one of our metro cars. So it gives us a little bit of a freebie. Let's see. I think we're going to go ahead and fill out this last red one because if you look for blue and purple, we'd only be able to fill out one unless we get a skip. So we're gonna cross that one out. We've completed our red line, so I'm gonna circle the yellow diamond to show that we'll get two points for completing that one at the end of the game. And moving on, we have a skip to, which I don't necessarily think that we need at this point, but we're gonna fill it in on our purple line to grab these two spaces, okay? And we have another skip to, okay. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna fill it in on our blue line, I think. And again, if we follow, we've already filled all these in, so our next two spaces are here and here. Okay, this is another type of special card, which is a transfer. For transfers, we are going to choose any one line, and we are going to look at the first kind of convergence of different subway stations there. So we're gonna look for a first empty station space where they have multiple train lines stopping. And I think we can go ahead and do this with our pink and we'll be okay. All right, so I'm gonna fill in an X for the transfer. Now we're gonna look at the number of different colored lines, which we have orange, we have teal, and we have pink. We're gonna multiply that by two, so that is six, and we'll be getting six points for that transfer at the end of the game. Ooh, and we have another transfer back to back. So another potential spot we could go is here, and we can use our teal since we have three spots available there. And here we only have two, so it'll be four points. Okay, and this is our last special card, which is the six, and this will allow us to reshuffle the deck and get some more um, numbers back in here. So let's see if there's one where we can use all six, although that might be kind of challenging. On teal, we can only use three. On our gray line, we could use one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, excellent. And we're gonna go ahead and reshuffle this with our remaining cards to reform a brand new deck of 15. So like I said, the base game does come with the double-sided board of Metro City and Tube Town, which have some different routes and how they interact, which makes it interesting from game to game. This game is also available as a free print and play. Um, so I'll put a link down in the description for the Board Game Geek files for that. We're gonna start our next round here with a three again. Um, so if you're interested in trying it out, you can definitely find them there. Even if you don't have a printer, this is a great one where you can just ha um, have even just a deck of cards with these numbers on it or something as a placeholder. And you can just have this on a tablet or what have you and just kind of fill it out digitally if you want to go that route. All right, we're gonna put this three down here with the teal so we can get these three random little boxes crossed out. And next up we have a five. Oh my gosh, this is very reminiscent of the first time <laughs> of our first round here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if we do five on purple, we'll have two left over that we can't complete. So I'm gonna try to wait to get some more here for purple and pink, although we only have one intersection with both. Maybe we can get a freebie and use it that way. Um, our oranges are also a little bit disjointed here with four of them. Um, but what I could do is do one and then two since we have two boxes left. Mm. Let's see where our green line is. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna go ahead and fill this in on our green line since we have exactly five spaces left. So one, two, three, four, five. So we've completed the green line. So we'll fill that out. Unfortunately, we didn't get to use that last box there to our advantage and the game will end once all of the car boxes are filled out. Um, we can put a transfer down. Let's see, are there any other transfer lines here or stations? Mm. 
We could just forfeit points on our purple station. I think we're gonna have to do that. Um, so we get four points for this. Okay, and moving on, we have another three here. So let's see, our blue line, we have one, two, and then three, four, so it's a little disjointed. Maybe we can get another pink, or oh, we can't get another purple, so that's a little unfortunate there. Um, Instead, what we can do is we can finish our teal line, it looks like. Yes, since we have three left. So we'll go one, two, three. That will give us our bonus of four points for finishing the teal line. Oh my gosh, we have all these low numbers. Um, we might as well just use this three on our orange line to fill up that one space. And we have a four now. So we could use, we need a five to complete yellow or to get gray later on, which I think we'll be able to get. So let's put our four on our yellows. Um, we'll only be able to use three of them. Oh, wait, four of them since that connects. Oh, but then we need a freebie for the last yellow. Oof, that probably wasn't the best move, but we'll continue on with it. We have another four. Okay, let's finish up our orange line here. We have one, two, three, and then we'll circle the four. We have a skip three. That would be not the best for any of these. Okay, what do we have left? We have our blues. We could do one, two, three, but then we would be one short of completing our blue line. However, there's no skip four, so that might be our best bet. Um, we also can't fill in a green line, so I think we're gonna have to go blue. Oh no, so for the blue, we're gonna follow. We have one, two, and we're gonna skip to our next blue. Oh dear, okay. And for the four, it is worth mentioning for the skip that you cross off or you skip over any previously crossed off stations, plural. So in that case, since there were two filled out, we got to fill in our X after on the first available space. For our four, we can put it on our gray line since there's only one left. Oh my goodness. And then for the pink, we'll just have to see what we get. One, two, three, four. Do we think we'll get a higher card than a four? We have six left. There are some smaller skips and some sixes. If we get a low number, we can put it in the green and just kind of waste that one. Um, but we don't wanna waste the four if we don't have to. Two, three, four. Ideally, we'd get a six for pink, but it's not guaranteed. So I, uh, we're gonna risk it. We're gonna go ahead and put this four here and finish our gray line for six points. Hopefully we don't regret that. A skip two, no. Let's put that here on our green. Hopefully we get a freebie or this six reshuffle. No, just a two, okay. So here we have one, two. And because all of our metros are filled in, we are now going to go ahead and proceed to scoring. So the first thing we're going to do is add the points from any of our completed stations. Um, in the solo game, like I said, we're always gonna circle the yellow diamond in a multiplayer game. Whoever gets it first will get the yellow diamond points and anybody after that will get two points or the um, white square value in points. So we have 10, 15, 19, 21 points for those. We're going to add up any points for our transfers, just taking the sum, so we have 14. We are going to look at the number of empty stations, which unfortunately we have quite a few, um, and we're gonna get a penalty. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 empty stations, which will be negative five points. And our total here then is going to be 40 points, right? 30, um, oh no, wait, just 30 points. Ooh, because of that negative. All right, and if we check, there is a solo so scoring guide back here for the solo variant. 30 points is, ooh, we're actually at an advanced level. Pretty awesome. So, all things said, our lowest would be zero or below, um, which says it is possible you may have gotten some rules incorrect, and the best is 50 plus. You are either a genius or have unspeakably good luck. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of Metro X from Game Right Games. 
Now, I have to start by saying I really personally enjoy the whole roll and write, flip and fill type of gameplay as long as it's implemented well. And in this game, it certainly is. When I first read the description, I was a little bit skeptic about how this game might play out over multiple plays. Was there a lot of depth? Was it just flipping over cards and writing in numbers or crossing off boxes? But I have found that there are some really interesting decisions to be made. And one of the reasons that lends itself to that is the fact that this is a flip and fill as opposed to a roll and write. So although the order of the cards is random, because it is a deck versus just a dice where each side can occur each time, as you go through the deck, you're gonna get more knowledge about what cards might remain and what cards you've already used. So for example, if I know that I've used up my skips, then I might want to make sure that I'm only limiting the number of spaces that I cross off at those junctions where all of those lines connect, unless I know for a fact that I am going to be getting that reshuffle card, in which case I'll get more skips going forward. So there's a little bit of strategy and preparation and planning ahead with the deck aspect of this game. And I think that the decisions on how the different lines kind of correlate to one another make for some really fun and exciting turns. Now, as far as the solo play versus the multiplayer goes, the solo play does have beat your own score, which it would be nice to have a set objective, but for a game that's as quick as this, I understand why that wasn't necessarily the best route to go no pun intended. Um, but I do think that in the multiplayer version, the race to complete each line is a little bit more interesting because you can get that uh, larger or lower value, whereas in the solo game, it just rewards you for completing those lines by giving you the higher score. So that's something that possibly there could have been a way to kind of manage out which routes are crossed off as far as major scoring from turn to turn. Like maybe you mark off the first one the first turn, then second one, so it incentivizes you to go for different routes. Um, so that would have been a little interesting, or even just like rolling a die or having a color in the bottom of the card to say like, okay, this route is going to be canceled out now. Um, something along those lines might have made it a little bit more interesting, but that's just a very minor thing. And again, when you're playing it solo, it doesn't particularly matter. It's just in comparison to the multiplayer version, it would have been nice to emulate that in some sort of way. However, Overall, this is a really fun, quick, to the point game. There's a surprising amount of depth there, like I said, with the deck and planning out your routes. And one of the things that really excites me about this game is that it does have a free print and play version, which I mentioned during the playthrough. So the link is down in the description if you wanna try it out for yourself. And in addition to that, there are tons of fan-made routes. So there are ones for Tokyo, for New York, for Gothenburg and Sweden, just all over the place. And um, it goes to show that a game like this, even smaller games that have just really solid communities of gamers who are willing to put in the time and effort to create their own maps, I think speaks a lot to the integrity of the game overall. And each of those maps does add a little bit of new variety in terms of how the routes intersect. So there's quite a bit of replayability there, even though you are playing the same game and utilizing the same mechanics throughout. So if you're looking for a quick flip and fill game, this is definitely one that you should check out, and that is Metro X. That's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like, and you can subscribe down below for more board game content. Thank you again so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Bye.